Well, good evening all my little Pokemons. You here with you tonight and uh feeling rather fluffy again. This happens to me sometimes. So, uh this evening we're gonna do another thoughts video. Tonight's thoughts will be on another Star Wars series. This one's fairly recent, and is another animated one. This one is called Star Wars Resistance. Not to be confused with Rebels or Clone Wars. And uh, I'm not as much super in love with this one as the other two. I don't hate it, but it's got no special love for me. So, I got some food in my mouth. Skin from a pea. That's annoying. Anyway, so this one is set around the beginning of episode seven ish. Um, and it has, deals with the uh, resistance and the first order and stuff like that. Uh, they're using a new 3D art style, uh, one that seems to be a more common thing that's been coming out. And I gotta say, not a really big fan of it. I don't feel it looks as good with these types of characters. If anything, it feels a lot more childish. It doesn't feel quite as much as a grown-up cartoon as I was hoping for. And to double down on that, most of the first whole season feels like a little kid's TV show. Um, we're focusing around uh, young teenager type characters who fly ships around this platformy thing. By the way, spoiler alert, just in case. I haven't ruined anything yet, but as always, potential spoilers. Um, so you got these, the, the, some of the main plot from the beginning is you, uh, our, our hero character is, uh, ends up on this platform, space platform over water. Um, they have these teenager type kids that race fighters around it. Um, gambling or whatever purposes, like horse races, just with spaceships. Uh, they're all so badly toyetic. I mean, I know most of this stuff is, you know, designed to sell toys, but these ships look like they found a bunch of toys and then moved them into being part of a show that didn't really need them specifically. Star Wars has enough Starfighter craft. We could have picked some stuff that looked a lot better. But no, we have these like ugly fighter fighter craft. And not only are these this small group of children uh, the only ones who are flying anything. There's adults on the station. Lots of adults. But children fly the spaceships. Uh, mostly. I think one of them, a couple of the pilots are adults, but mostly focusing on these young children -y type people. Teenagers. <laughs> um, they're the only actual line of defense this station has against assault. And pirates and stuff come up. So, you're defended by children. Not even organized children. They're really, really bad at their job. <sighs> uh, plot goes on through the first season here. Really, 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 really basic plot. Nothing worth, you know, spending my full attention on it. Even. I definitely would say this is a put on in the background type season. Uh, 
I'd say some of the only pluses are um, the parts dealers in the, uh, the station are um, an interspecies homosexual couple, which I thought was hilarious. And uh, they're a very, they are one of the brightest spots of this whole show. Um, the leader of the station is mostly an idiot. He's the father of one of the aces. Uh, and yeah, apparently married to someone who's in the resistance, who stays away and doesn't get involved really. For the first season completely. <sighs> In the end, we find out that this station is also a spaceship, and they use it to take off and try and fly away from the First Order, who wants to do bad stuff to its inhabitants. Um, and that's the end of the first season, really. Uh, it's really forgettable in that sense. The second season gets a lot better, but it's still not that great. Um, they take the station to several different locations and use it as, you know, trying to hide or help the resistance or get more supplies. Um... think some of this stuff would have been things they would have thought through, you know, actually had supplies on the station for an extended period of time, since they don't exactly have marketing. People weren't really coming in and out of the station from the looks of it. It was just there. Um, <clears throat> the marketplace was mostly for the residents that ran the station. Really small, closed economy, not exactly very diverse. Not exactly a smart setup, to be honest. Um, uh, yeah. So, second season was a lot better. Um, it actually had stuff going on. It actually felt like we did stuff. Um, still just the six kids being their only real defensive line. Uh, going against TIE Fighters, and at best these ships have like two laser cannons, uh, no photon torpedoes or any, or proton torpedoes, proton torpedoes, yeah that's the right word for this series, uh, <laughs> no bombs, nothing else, just two laser blasters for one, and the pilots are not really good at using them, so, you don't have a lot of people get a lot of uh, wins for this team. Anyway, uh, the characters are 99.9% .9 forgettable or annoying. Uh, so annoying is the only ones I can really think about and remember. The Rodinian, who is like the, you know, the second best pilot, not our main hero person. He's loud and annoying. The daughter of the um, space station's boss, who's one of the pilots, she's, she's a personality girl, that's, uh, one of those characters, so, not really feeling much in there, like, you know, proud girl, girl who's got all of it going on, I'm like, eh, we've done that, don't, just, just have her be a person, don't, don't, don't have her do that, and one of the mechanics, who is exceptionally annoying. You can remember him because his language skills stink and he just he's uh, not quite Jar Jar level annoying but pretty high up there on the why are you why are we using this? And you can't blame Lucas on this one because this is a uh, fairly recent series. Uh, after Rebels ended, Disney started this one. And yeah, it went there. Really seems like they're targeting a younger crowd and one that doesn't know as much about Star Wars at all again. 
because most of this felt like hand holding. Um, uh, not really having a great love for it. I will keep watching it, but it's definitely not a rewatcher for me. It's a it's a pass through it and go. Okay, got my got my badge. I succeeded at watching that. I can watch something else now. <sighs> so that that show exists. Can I recommend it? Not really. If you've watched everything else Star Wars and you want to know you've seen everything, watch it. I mean, this didn't really do anything for me great. Um, but if you have Disney+, Plus, you have it available to you. The whole series is at least seasons one and two. I don't know if there's anything more released yet. Or on there. Stream away. Enjoy yourself. I will probably buy season two on disc whenever it comes out. I bought season one on disc. That was the first way I actually saw any of it. It wasn't expensive, so eh, no loss there. But I can only find it on DVD, no Blu-ray. Kind of annoying. I I really do my best to have as much of my Star Wars archives on Blu-ray or better. This all I could find on DVD. Such is life. Uh, maybe one day they'll release it again on Blu-ray and I'll grab that just to fix things. Uh, the only other thing in my Star Wars library that is DVD is the beginning of Clone Wars because those were only ever released on DVD. And I had to search on eBay to find those two things. So that's how that turned out. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a Star Wars thing. Um, not my favorite by far. Probably the worst thing I've seen in Star Wars. And I watched all the movies, including Solo and the prequels. We'll get into those soon enough. Um, so I'm trying to cover all the Star Wars y stuff here, and uh, they're on the horizon. So. Thank you for spending some time listening to my babbling about a Star Wars TV series you're probably not going to watch. Don't worry, you're not missing too much. Um, so, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the little dingly bell. Put the little dingly bell let you know when I post new videos. And my Patreon link is in the description box below. If you're so inclined, it's there. I appreciate anything given to me. But, no pressure, I don't hide anything behind a paywall. All my videos are just available to you as I upload them. <sighs> but for now, this little Mewpew is going to go off and do things. Thank you for spending time with me, and I'll see you all again on the next video.